The paints have been picked, I've got my paper out, the water's clean and I've chosen the brush. So now what's the problem? I think I have commitment issues. Here is a box of Gansai Tambi Kuretake graphite colours that looks like nothing on earth, looks like a box of dirt. Um, but if you paint these lightly, not too much pigment um, compared to the uh, water, so a little bit of water and a lot of, no, a lot of water and a little bit of paint, you get some quite nice uh, colours. So you see right away there, that's far too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with the flow and allow that to spread there into the water. And um, shall I touch it there and see what happens? So I'm going to cover this piece of paper with some shapes and explore these colours and let them do their own thing. And then afterwards, I think I might just put some doodles on top. What do you think about that for an original idea? But uh, it's so difficult to think of something different to do every day. Um, and I know everyone's in the same boat and I've been watching other, oh, look at that wonderful um, explosion of pigment there. Um, I've been watching a few other um, YouTubers who um, I would probably be inclined to recommend. There's a lady called Denise Love, um, who does, I suppose it's really mixed media. She tends to use a lot of stencils um, on top of her backgrounds and so on. And, and that's interesting. Um, you might want to have a look at her. She's got about, how many thousands has she got now? Uh, Denise, Denise, where are you? Where are you, Denise? She has got nearly 9,000 subscribers. Um, so yeah, she's, she's a happy little soul. She's full of, she reminds me of, um, a little bit of, do you know, um, now what's her name? Um, Christy, Christy, Christy Rice, you know, Christy Rice, of course you do. And uh, she reminds me, this Denise Love reminds me of her a little bit. I'm not quite sure why. Why don't you go and check her out and see what you think? Um, Anyway, uh, why am I saying this? Yeah, I'm interested in the idea of um, uh, using stencils and so on, but I can't quite bring myself to to buy any the stencils. So I would have to sit down and, and make them. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I haven't got the time at the moment. Hoping that... Um, Things are going to settle down. Oops, that's very dark. So it's very strong, this paint, very strong. And really, it's much more beautiful when you, when it's light, when it's really attenuated, when you really stretch it out and let it just drift into patterns and stuff. I'm going to put some more water here and let that... I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. None at all. What am I doing? What am I even doing on the planet? Not much. Anyway, I'm feeling a little bit more cheerful today because my ears are working. And um, that's always helpful. You know, it's when your senses don't function, when your ears don't work, you notice I keep dropping things. And it's like, yeah, I'm sorry, Tamsin, I've just dropped. Uh, what was it? I, I broke the inside of the fridge. You know those um, plastic shelf things that hang on the inside of the... Did you know how easy they are to break if you drop a piece of cheese on one? Crash, bang. We've got no shelves on the inside of our fridge door at the moment because I've broken them all. Then I dropped a bag of rice. Then I dropped a bag of dog food. Then I dropped a bunch of um, bird seed. It's like, what? <laughs> but I blame it on my ears. Okay, so that is going to, you know, do its thing. And, um, oh, I should have said I'm painting on a sheet of Etcher watercolour in a block. Um, and so I'm going to put that over here to dry. And in the meantime, I need to find some more paper. Um, oh, I know what I've got. I have one I prepared earlier. I've forgotten about this. 
This is um, the Meaden watercolour paper, 100% cotton. What is it about rag, cotton rag? What are people on? What really is going on? I need to find out about this because um, cotton rag paper used to be a way of saying that it was watercolour paper made from cotton. Cotton, that is to say recycled cotton. And all of a sudden people are talking about chopped up t-shirts and paper that feels like cotton because it's made from chopped up t-shirts. And I have a horrible feeling that the marketing boys have got their teeth into this one and are telling us little fibbies again. So I need to look into this. If anybody has any clues, do let me know in the comments below. But um, otherwise, you know, I, heard, I came across another expression the other day, yesterday, wasn't it? Um, somebody was revealing the fact that uh, a little bit of fibrillation has been going on on YouTube. And he said, put a cap on it. I think it's what you said, something like that. And apparently it means stop lying. So, yeah. Anyway, so here's one I did earlier. This is not um, this, Kiritaki graphite colours. This is, um, this is, this is um, need and paint. And I just did a loose watercolour background on that. And what we could do here is I could try to identify some shapes and um, turn it into something. Um, not sure what at the moment. I'm going to sit down. Uh, what shall I do with this? Um, 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 um. So this is where you turn to a book of inspiration, which has got things in it that you may or may not have ever used before. And you say to yourself, oh, I don't know. Uh, tell you what, why don't we pick up a pen, more or less at random, and 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 doodle and, and see what happens. It, this was meant to be a landscape, actually, originally. Um, and I was going to put houses up the top here. Do you remember a little while ago we did a... Um, uh, a village walk, I called it. And so I was, I was thinking I would do something similar again. And then I forgot all about it. So I seem to have remembered. And so we'll... Uh, let's do that, shall we? On this one. I'm just going to... I'm going to ramble, okay? Rambling, Rose. Don't know where this is going to go. Rambling, Rose. Remember that song? Why I love you, no one knows. Wasn't that something like that? Okay, and uh, let's put a tree in here. Put some apples on the tree. Don't think we're going to have any apples this year. Um, I think the wind came at just the wrong moment, just as the um, blossom was on the apple trees. I think it all got blown off. Okay, so there we have that. And um, what should I do now? Let's put a um, oh, I don't know. Uh, how about just draw a wall? Has anyone here been to Yorkshire? I used, I was in love with the stone walls in Yorkshire when I was younger we used to go there on holiday and the dry stone walls which like they literally march across the countryside and they are so uh artistically arranged hang on a second um somewhere here Anyway, I um, have a book somewhere, I can't find it, but um, these are some pictures of dry stone walls which um, go back a long time in Yorkshire and the, 
this is a particularly good book with some lovely photos in it. And um, there are still examples standing in the dales in Yorkshire from Viking days. And um, they had a particularly clever way of putting stones together so that they didn't fall down and didn't need mortar or cement or anything like that. So completely without any kind of carbon footprint, these stones have stood the test of time and still stand there. So I'm just kind of scribbling stones here and uh, building a wall at the front of my painting, which is generally considered to be not a good idea from the point of view of composition. But if you were making something that you were going to then doodle on, which might be what I'm going to do here, um, I don't see anything wrong with that. So anyway, here's my tribute to Dennis Healy and his dry stone walling book of the Yorkshire Dales, which I'm sure I can find. I know it's here somewhere. I'm going to uh, dig it out and show you some pictures. Hopefully, as, as I'm speaking right now, uh, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. And you'll probably say, well, it doesn't look anything like your drawing. No, probably won't, but there we are. Um, okay, so we'll have some tumble down stones here. And this pen, this Kuretake uh, Fudenosuke Tombow pen, is quite nice for drawing rocks because as you press harder, you get a, a broader line and it, you can go very light as well. So you can sort of automatically get shadow underneath. And uh, so, yeah, if you wanted to, you could go around some of these, filling in the gaps where you have the shadows behind the stones. You could do that. I don't see why not. Uh, and uh, so we're waiting right now for the um, other painting to dry. I'm letting it dry naturally because when you're doing wet in wet like that, you get some better effects if you allow the pigment to move and it will continue to move for quite a long time actually if you give it half a chance. If you whack it with a, with a dryer, you know, uh, what do they call them? Heat tool, otherwise known as a hair dryer. Um, I use a hair dryer. We, uh, I haven't bought a special tool because I can't see any point, but anyway. Um, then it sort of freezes it in time and you uh, you don't get the same amount of blending, which you might want, you know, you might not want it to blend as much um, because you might want it like that. So there we are, there's our stones for the dry stone wall. And we could um, we could put some cracks in there because it looks like an egg, doesn't it? Um, you could do that. And I'm also going to put some color on there in a minute. And then in the middle here, I suppose what we really need is some sheep. Um, let me think, how do you draw a sheep? Uh, oh, I'll just look out the window and see what I can see. Uh, right, so sheep, is that what I want? What I actually want here, I'm seeing some lines here. So I'm seeing some more landscape before I do anything else. And then maybe what I'm seeing here is Oh, I'm starting, starting to sound like an artist. I feel compelled to, I'm obsessed with, yeah. Uh, yes, right. Let's just put some loose flowers here and turn this into something completely ridiculous. No, just kidding. It's artistic. I'm going to put some colour on here in a minute. That's what I'm going to do next. Let's grab some of this. What have we got here? We've got grey. Oh, my ears. Beige. It's going to be different depending on 
what's underneath as well, isn't it? The colour that you put on top. So I think the, these graphite ones are quite good for doing stones. What do you think? Because it's, um, you know, these are uh, earthy sort of pigments, aren't they? So we just soften some of that and leave some of it a little bit sketchy. That's a bluish one. I put some blue here, maybe. And I'm I'm not filling it. It's not. I'm not. I'm not doing a coloring book. Let that run. 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 Forest. Run. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask. Has anybody out there got a copy or CD of the film called Maudie? About Maud, um, oh, I can never remember her last name. Um, the painter from the, the New, New Brunswick, was it? Or, uh, I We live in France for our sins. I don't know what I did. I must have done something terrible in a previous life or something. Um, but... We can't buy, can't download videos except in French. And I'm sorry, but I, I'm not going to listen to a dubbed video. Um, and I was just thinking, maybe somebody out there has got a, uh, um, a copy of it that they would be prepared to sell to me and pop in the post so that I could watch it because a lot of people suggested that film and uh, I can't watch it because we can't get it in English. So I don't know. Is that an unreasonable thing? Um, so then we've got some uh, uh, some greenery here. I don't like that green very much, do you? No, get rid of that. What I'm going to do is colour that in and let me find something a little bit different, like pink. That's not going to work. It's too pink. What about this? Mm. I think sometimes in Yorkshire you find these little pink flowers just blossoming up around the walls. You never know, do you? You never know. You just never know. You have to try these things. Um. And then maybe we want to come up here and put some grey or make these a little bit darker. And green tree. Not very green, does it? But if it's in the distance, you know, I'm just kind of trying to limit myself with these colors. I'm gonna put some black on there and make it a little bit more artistic, rather than so funky. And we need to just, I think, 
That faded back quite a lot, didn't it? These stones so make them a bit darker. Let that dry. So I've picked up my white gel pen and um, we will go over these flowers just to lighten them up a bit. The, the white, if you go over something like pink or any dark colour, the white doesn't stay white it seems to me, it picks up whatever's underneath. And um, goes pink in this case. And yeah, so I think probably I'm going to say, uh, well, maybe we'll put some little whites up here. Probably could do with some life. So like, I don't know, some birds in the sky. I kind of chickened out as far as the sheep went, so we just, I put some sheep in down here. And uh, couple of sheep, yeah. Maybe one more. Put the ears in first sometimes in the head, but then in the body and then the legs. We don't worry too much about realism. There they are, and they're eating grass. And Bob's your uncle, you have a whimsical painting. Maybe we should put a little bit of a line there. And yeah, so that's that. Um, put that to one side. And maybe we'll come back to this one. Now, um, working on the same theme, you can see here that this is basically a bunch of rocks, can't you? So I'm going to take my same pen and transform these more or less random shapes that are formed underneath uh, into a stone, an arrangement of stone. Okay, so, and then we can put some if we want to, having done that, we'll be able to put some uh, patterns on top, if that's what we feel like doing. So I'm just picking out the areas which have got um, one particular colour, so I'm just leaving it like that. Nature tends to, to form patterns, doesn't it, whether you like it or not, and that paint answers to the call of nature, isn't it? Especially when it's uh, got a lot of natural pigments in it, like this uh, graphite stuff. I don't know if it's really got graphite in it or whether they're just making that up. I'd like to go back to Yorkshire one time, sometime, before it's too late, but maybe it's already too late. There we are, there's a pile of rocks. Put that there. This has turned into a sort of cairn, hasn't it?
Yeah, okay. So then can I, do you think, um, um, should I add something to each of those or should I embellish them as they stand? What should I do, I wonder? Um, On the other one, what I did, it wasn't it, I went in and filled the dark areas in. So maybe I'll do that first. Perhaps, um, perhaps that's a good way to start. So I like the shadows between the rocks. Where the little animals live. You know, apparently in these stone walls that the Vikings started and still bits still bits standing in Yorkshire and elsewhere in the country as well of um, walls that were built by the Vikings when they invaded England all those years ago. And uh, they knew how to build a stone wall to stand up to years and years of, I mean, the Romans came and went. Uh, they built walls as well, Hadrian's Wall. That's what they built, didn't they? That big one up there in the north. So much history in England, so much interesting uh, things, so many interesting things to know and to care about. Okay. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'll go for a, um, a smaller brush and perhaps some gray. And then perhaps I'll just begin to put in lines and I don't know where this is going to go. No idea. Um, what is art? What is creativity? What is it all about? We are talking a lot about what it is to be an artist, whether or not we can call ourselves artists. And Tamsin, my daughter, had a very interesting thought. She said, I think probably being an artist is something that comes and goes. You're not an artist every single time you pick up a brush or a creative tool. Sometimes you are. But sometimes you aren't. And I said, oh, yes, I suppose it's like any sort of profession, because just because you've got the badge that says you're a doctor, it doesn't mean to say that you are always a doctor or nothing but a doctor. Sometimes you might be a drunk or a hobo. I've been watching The Fugitive, you see. So that's, that's kind of a better, to me, as a better way of looking at it to say, oh, you know, I, I do art and sometimes I create something which makes me feel like an artist. Why? I don't know really. But I don't think I'm always an artist. Um... 
and sometimes things fail. And then you have to grab a piece of paper and say, no, <laughs> that's not what I meant. Take that away. And sometimes as you go along, you you begin to see what, what you were doing. You can always do it again, can't you? You can always say, oh, now I've done that and half of it is wrong, but I could do that again. Yeah, so maybe you might. We have a lot of these big stones come around here, they call them many ears. And um, somebody accidentally broke one in half the other day, they're building a house and they've been told they had to preserve it at all costs. And I don't know quite how it happened, but this thing got broken and there's an absolute storm of outrage from the preservers of the ancient history of Brittany. How could you do that? It's irreplaceable. I don't know what's going to happen. Let us see. Sometimes you have no idea. Uh, what's that one? What's that one? Hmm, that's a bit reddish. What's that one? That's a bit brownish. What's that one? That's yuck. This kind of thing is really good practice for line making. Practicing your brush work, you know, uh, learning how to control your brush so you can make thick and thin lines, things like that. And I'm just using one brush. Smallish one, this is a five, I think. Uh, yeah. that one darker, I think. Maybe we need some blobs here. The last thing I'm trying to do is make this realistic. I can't see the point. You know, I cannot see the point in realism because it's out there. Why do you want to paint it? Just take a photograph. What are we doing this for? Fun. To see what happens. To discover, to put some energy into the world that wasn't there before. To give rocks the idea that they could be spotty if they wanted to be. 
No one's going to get cross with them for being spotty. Unlike my dog, who decides all of a sudden, I just said last week, she's a good girl, she doesn't dig. So what does she go and do? She suddenly decided she's going to try and dig to Australia. I mean, what? So now you can't, you can't be let out because you're an idiot and you... Ugh. Has somebody sent her a letter and tell her to try not to be such a twazzock? Lottie, you are a twit. There's only one person who's going to suffer from this, and it's you. Well, me too, because, well, Tamsin, actually, she's the one who gets to clean her. I'm going to make these shadowy bits a bit darker, a bit more dark graphite. It's very good because it, it does go very dark, but it will also go very light and very interesting. Yeah, we missed that one completely. So when you're doing art or you're doodling or painting or messing around or wasting time or whatever you want to call it, um, you never know what's going to happen. And sometimes something turns out and you, oh, no, yeah, no, whatever. Um, but what to do next? So one thing to do, since we have this amazing technology and a lot of people have got them, um, bring your photocopier into the um, arena of art. And there's lots of ways that you can use photocopies for doing art with, but just literally as to how to decide what to do with the next step. Because if you draw on top of this, you're committed. Now, going back to the other one that I did earlier, this practice one, which was just messing around, um, on the bottom here, I've so sort of thought, you know what, there would be fossils in some of these rocks and, and this spiral um, that I love to do, that is a bit like a fossil, isn't it? So I was sort of playing around with that and I, I wouldn't exactly say that this is what you would call a work of art. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's um, interesting, isn't it? So then I thought, well, um, I'll do some lines and things on these rocks and they're sort of moving away from being rocks, aren't they? So... What would you do next? This is the question. What would you do next? And I bet some of you out there have got brilliant answers to that question. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm very boring. I don't have any ideas. I I don't. I'm I'm um, an idea free zone. You could say. Um. So yeah, let's um. You know, think of this as being a swatch and, and that we could we could say, okay, I'm going to just ignore the fact that these are rocks and I'm going to do the famous, um, I wish my phone would stop chiming, the famous um, branching stem of leaves like that. Who was that? Who was that? Who's talking to me? Um, yeah, so what do you think of that? The famous branching sprig of leaves. Could do that. Um, we could also do some nice big spirals which are pretending to be Ammonites, like that, and we could have a smaller one here, maybe a little one down here. And then what could we have? We could have here, we could have a nice flower. like that, and then maybe we could just have, why don't we put here some, some independent leaf shapes like this, and they could have lines, look a bit like eyes, don't they?
something like that. And then that's kind of asking for berries. And you see how it, it grows and develops. And this one obviously needs another one here, doesn't it now? And we could have, uh, I haven't forgotten that I'm doing this on the photocopy. And the reason is because I'm trying it out. Um, and here we could have, what could we have here? We could have a branch with some, and then we could have another one and another one. Then we could put sort of berries on the end. Something like that. Uh, we could leave that one blank because that's already quite interesting. And in this one, perhaps we'll put some leaves like that. And then we could have a sort of, this one does look like a menia. Do that. Um, what could we do here? Keep it simple. Just have three outlined blocks, perhaps rocks within rocks. And this one, well, we could go round some of these just as pebbles. Just some of them, just make ovals, maybe. And then up here, uh, what about groups of dots overlapping? And down here, maybe. Get some nice kind of uh, raindrop shapes with these pens, can't you? So we can do that. And I suppose here we could do something like this, cut along the dotted line. The thing is, when you do it like this, practicing on your um, photocopy, you're not committed. I probably should be committed, joking. Um, but yeah, so you can practice and then you can decide whether or not you like it. Hey, how about that for a brilliant idea? We can do, we can decide what we want to do and then go back and do it on the real thing, if you want, or not. And maybe once you've practiced for a while, when you go back, you'll think of better ideas. It's often a good idea to repeat the motif. So you've got the shape on the outside. You can repeat the shape that's on the outside on the inside. Also repeat it from here to here. It gives you a sense of coherence, ha uh ha, -huh, so to speak. And um, we might want to do that up here as well. OK, 
Okay. I think probably this is enough. I do like the spiral. I, I know now why. I said a little while ago, I wonder why this appeals. I think it's because when I was a child, I used to go to the museum in the nearby town. I used to take myself on the bus and I used to go into Dartford and I used to go to Dartford Museum with my sketchbook. And I would know I was a weird child. I used to sit there and I used to draw all the Stone Age things from the case, the cages, you know, cages, the glass cases, all, everything was behind glass. And um, that's one of my biggest memories of being about eight, getting on the bus all by myself and trotting off to the museum. I think it used to cost me fourpence to go to, made, to Dartford from Swanley. I used to get half a crown for my pocket money. But I used to get my bus money to go to school. And I used to walk and save the bus money so that I could spend it on sweets. Or I would save it up and then take myself off to Dartford to go to the museum. I tried taking my sister with me a few times, but she wasn't really interested. Right, I think I've done enough here. I think that will do. So this is my practice one, and I'm going to transfer it onto there, and it should look better, but it might not, but we'll see. I'm not gonna make you sit through that with me, um, but if you see it at the end and it looks a little bit different in the thumbnail, you'll know why. Uh, you could add gold and um, white if you wanted to, to make this look different. So um, I might try that out once I've transferred the bulk of it onto this one. You could also do it with a brush. You don't have to use a pen. You could do all of these lines with a brush. Might take a little bit longer, um, but uh, definitely can be done. No doubt about that. So I am going to say thank you very much for watching. Thank you for staying to the end of the video if you are still here. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications. That is very important. And then you do hear when a new video comes out. Um, and the other thing is um, pop along to our website, dianeanton.com, um, where you will see sketches for all of the other videos that we've got, the ones that need sketches. This one doesn't. They're all free. If you have a problem using the website, do please contact us by email at studio at dianeanton.com and we will do our best to help you. But please don't put messages like that on the Facebook page. The Facebook is for you sharing your art and having fun, not for sharing problems that you might be having. So bring those to me direct and I'll be able to help you out with those things if you don't mind, that would be great. Don't forget that if you're a member of either Patreon, our Patreon that is, or of our YouTube membership club, so to speak, um, then it starts at $2.99 a month and for that you get various different perks and you can also join our private Facebook group which is for members only which is an absolutely secure place less than 500 people on there and everyone seems to everyone who bothers to contribute gets to know one another and they share their paintings and everything's really lovely on there so if you had bad experiences like I have in the past as well with Facebook people attacking you you won't get attacked on our private group honestly it's a safe place and it's nice to be able to share your pictures isn't it um it's nice to be able to create something and share it we don't have much opportunity especially as we get older people aren't interested in what we are doing um but on there people are and i am and i'm always there and i look at what you've done and i think how marvelous and everything appropriate so yeah um well, I'm wombling on again. Uh, I will let you go and I will see you again soon. And thank you for being my friends. Thank you. <laughs>